I want to thank God for this opportunity that uh, God has given me to come to Canada, especially to this place of Vancouver. i never been here before. It was last year I went to Winnipeg, Canada, and it was too cold for me there. <laughs> Even though I live in the U.S. for many years, I find it also very cold this morning in Benacoma. I want to thank Dean, Aisha, and Bishop Stephen, and the Anglican Network in Canada for inviting me to come. And I want to thank Abuna Batana, Abuna Emmanuel, and all of you for giving me, giving me this opportunity to come and be part of this church service this morning. I want to bring greeting from the newest nation in the world, the nation we are proud of, the nation of South Sudan. Greeting from all your people back home. And greeting from the church. <laughs> greeting from the church, especially the Anglican church. The Episcopal Church of Sudan. Most of the bishop knows that I'm here with you today. We are doing well, although there's a lot of problems going on in South Sudan. We thank God to be a nation, and we proud for our nation. My name is Abraham Yel Nyar. I used to live in Atlanta, Georgia. United States of America came there in 2001 with a group known as the Lost Boy of Sudan. I wrote a very small book called Lost Boy No More. You can find it online, read it, and it will bless you. I was been followed by the 60 Minute program, and maybe some of you have seen it. On Easter Sunday, I was shown again for 12 years program of the Lost Boy in America. God called me back home to lead the Church of God. Currently, I'm the Bishop of the Episcopal Church, dies of a will in Northern Barbara. I know most of you come this morning to come and see how Bishop look like. Some of you. <laughs> Maybe I've never seen a young bishop like me, but this is what God has done with me. My calling to be a bishop in the Church of God, give me a hope that my generation, one day one of them will be a president of our beloved country, the Republic of South Sudan. This is not what we are talking about. Let me come back to the message I want to share with you brothers and sisters. I was told there's 5,000 and plus South Sudanese around the cook. Can they look at each other? Are you 5,000? <laughs> Where are the others? Or oh, you people don't come to church. You came to be to a Western world and you forgot coming to the church. Maybe I called that we were chosen. Good. I know that, you know, before we came here, we prayed and prayed that God give me a chance to go to Canada or to America or to Australia or to Europe. And Lord, I will follow you. I will love you. You know, some of us never come to church since we came to this nation. It's shame on us. So we used to come to church. I feel church is the only only peaceful place one can have to be part of. But for a few of you who are here today, I want to talk about something I feel will help us. Lack of forgiveness destroys our community. Let me say it again, lack of forgiveness destroys our community. We live in the world, we live in a hardened world, 
A while people do a wrong thing to other people. People hurt each other on daily basis through the word and through the action. And some people don't even say sorry for those words and for the action they have done. Because they feel if they say sorry, they are coward. They should not say sorry. They are men and strong, and they should not say sorry. This is the world we live in today. This is the Canada you live in today. And this word and action and action people do lead us to the bitterness and anger that is spoil our minds. We become bitter and anger and when you see someone who has done something wrong to you, you want to fight that person. You want to kill that person because you don't like that person. Because lack of forgiveness leads us to be like that. Let me remind you of what's been going on in Sudan. We fought for more than 50 years. South Sudan is fighting for their identity. As black African, as Christian, we were told just to behave and to dress like Muslim, even though we are not Muslim. They want us to respect other culture than our own culture. We fight for that. But that fight will not only be between the north and the south. The long fighting cause fighting within even the family, in the community, in the tribe. It was last year when all of us were shocked, when people of wow, people who have been living together for many years, fight and many people were killed. It was earlier this year when people in Rumbek from the same tribe, from the same country, fight and more than 50 were killed. You cannot talk even about Jonglei State. Jonglei State, even though South Sudan is enjoying the peace now, there's no peace in Jonglei State. People are fighting and killing each other. Lack of forgiveness is our problem, my brothers and sisters. Forgiveness is needed in the family. Even in the family here in Canada, forgiveness is needed. Why you find some of the men beating their wives, mistreating their families for no reason? No reason at all. Maybe a young man being told, you see, your wife will be here because you never beat her. <laughs> you never take this wife. And he listened to my kids, friends, and come back home, do maratoy. With no reason. No reason at all. Forgiveness is needed in the family. And you see, the ladies are not obeyed to the men by saying we have come to the most free of God, Canada. Later, my book tell him, I will kick you out from my house. <laughs> Love of forgiveness cause breakdown of some of our families. People are not living together. The wife of kids, Raja Mutobara, and maybe Raja will keep drinking and she said, I don't need one more. You know the most suffering 
our own children. The innocent children are the most suffering. When the wife may think that getting rid of these men is the solution to her problem. But you know, it became worse and worse. And you find some of the children left home and became street boys and girls. Lack of forgiveness is also in the church. People don't get together because we cannot be led by this tribe. We cannot be led by this one. I'm from this tribe. I want my own tribe. If we want to be in the same church, our man must be the leader, not you. Nasanin, Chalu, and go a little long and then Kukun Abunat. And chill aside, we can do Nasanin for us. I'm the leader. You need to do it like the way I want it to be done. The church is chief, divided people. Church of God must not and will never divide people. Should bring people together as one family. The family, the extended family of God in this world. Don't you know that it's only in the church that we are brothers and sisters in Christ? What kind of a church is this divided people? Is it a church or something else? In the community, community leaders Italian and Al, Mosulman, it will be sure. And the community, our community are breaking up. Then can we sing that let us have our own danger? Tell you, you can tell them like that. Another guy, I'm a designer. We want to speak our own language. They don't matter how we're English, but they are. But that was not the solution. The same community keep divided and divided and divided. Maybe some people, some leaders have got misunderstanding. And if I'm a danger, I will go back to the danger community and say, you see what Din Murawi have done? I don't want to be part of that leadership anymore. If you think I want to listen to me, I want to be part of that leadership. We need to follow our own. That's the problem here in Canada yeah. and back home. Yeah. You see, some of our politicians are not doing very well. They are the one coming home and saying, Alan we are not you Well, I'm not Flan. Mother man with a cartoon never should <laughs> we will deal with them. Some of our problems at home have caused by our own politicians. Communities have broke down because of lack of forgiveness. Let me tell you stories. Last year I was sent by the church, by the house of bishop to go to Katorit, Kafota, and to Narus. We were going there. There was a the news that the one, another diocese of Kafota. So we went there for assessment. We found out that there are not a lot of people, the person who are in the church. Unless I can have a free knock. Most of them are from Adenkas who are in the refugee camp and they live there in this place. But it's very hard to find 
a church, Anglican church, by the force. <laughs> Catholic have got one church or two. That's it. Catholic church been there for a long time. So we will we will want to find out why people, the native of Kafota, don't come to church. It's what I was told. When the missionaries came there, the Catholic missionaries were preaching the good news to people of Kafota. That when you became a Christian, you don't do this and this and this. And then one thing they mentioned, you don't kill. You don't kill at a person, man put up his hand and asked the evangelist, do your God say we cannot kill people, even boy? <laughs> Because to them, Buya is enemy. <laughs> Do your God say, Buya cannot be killed. And the missionary said, yes, anybody cannot be killed. <laughs> the person don't for food. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because they were not being allowed to kill Buya. Lack of forgiveness. Lack of forgiveness, Ajama, is our problem. It's the major problem. You see what the lack of forgiveness costs. Sudan is split into two countries because we fail to forgive one another. We fail to forgive one another. Even today, we are two countries. We are still fighting and killing one another. Lack of forgiveness can destroy the family, can destroy the community. We need to forgive those who hurt us, those who bring wrong thing to us, and also we should ask those we wrong to them to forgive us. True forgiveness leads to reconciliation and to deliverance and to the healing of body, mind, and soul. True forgiveness, brothers and sisters, can lead to reconciliation. And to deliver, and that will heal our bodies, our minds, and our soul. Forgiveness is a prayer as reflected in our Lord's prayers, Matthew 6. Forgive us. And we forgive those who wrong us. For if you forgive men and women, when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. This from the Bible, this is not from me. When you forgive those who wrong you, your God will also forgive you. But you know the funny thing is this. For us, when we have a problem, and people want to reconcile you, most of them you would say, Kalamitai mazole, mamunuzo. Only God, <laughs> only God who will get it. Look, look and we still come to one church. Hallelujah. Amen. We still come to one church and pretend that we are praying to God. And 
God knows our heart. We still come to one community. And you know sometimes when the leader call a meeting, a community leader. Or another from Sudanese Kuluk. I demand from Ankaravia Dream. Sixteen May is coming. It's a plan that some people will question the leadership. Who are those coming to the meeting? Who are there out of a summit that are not there to me? Then I will look. Lozora, the talented people, I will not come. Lofulan, <laughs> people, I will not What kind of community? What kind of community are we going to leave to this young one? You know the good thing with these children here? They don't know about our tribe. Thank God for this children. When you go to any community, any Sudanese family, these children will run to you. Uncle Gay, Uncle Gay, Auntie Gay. We are the problem. Some of us are trying to tell our children, learn, learn, by your uncle. They will not know. Should be able to go back to them. For the time to talk. Whether you speak Dengo or what, they don't know. They know only the English. And they know that you told them you are from Sudan. Whoever comes from Sudan, this is that. And brothers and sisters, that's the kind of community we need. They are community that they are right now. We are tired of all this misunderstanding and fighting and conflict and continue. I got it directly. Give chance to these children. Don't teach them things they don't need to know. Things they don't need. Teach them things they need. A lack of forgiveness is the major problem. Forgiveness is costly. Of course, it's very costly. <coughs> to forgive those who wrong you is not a easy thing. But look, Jesus Christ, our Lord, died on the cross as a sign of forgiveness to all of us. <coughs> Jesus died for us to be forgiven. For her to be forgiven. <laughs> For her to have a relationship with our own God. Look what happened when Jesus was still on the earth. Peter came to Jesus and asked him. Jesus was one time talking about forgiveness. You forgive one another. And when you love, one another and care for one another. That shown you are truly my disciple. And Peter came to him and asked him, Jesus, you talk about this thing. And Jesus said, Yes. Peter asked, Lord, how many times? How many times? Shall I forgive my brother and my sister when they wrong to me? How many times? It was Peter. How many times? If you want me to forgive, how many times shall I forgive? Seven times? <coughs> That's Peter. Seven times? How to seven times? I think. Peter was not happy. Maybe with some people in the group. There are only 12. One, two, three, four, twelve. But Peter was not happy. Maybe somebody there was causing him a problem. Jesus said, no. Not even several. 
70 times what? <coughs> Equal what? Those who are good in us. Not all of them. <laughs> 70 times 7. 490. 490. Yes. I never do you have time to sit down to say, Marade, you're good again, I'm very wrong. <laughs> Would you have time to do that? <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. Would you have time to do that? No. And then you will call a meeting. Hey, you community leader, come. I have a case with this man. <laughs> she wronged me. You're good, you're good, you're good up to seven. 70 times seven? 490. 490? <laughs> no one can do that. Cannot do something. Jesus was going to tell Peter, Peter, when you live together, you were wrong. Whatever. When you leave other community, you were wrong. Whatever. You just forget about it. You don't need to worry why you did it the other day. Forget about it. Will you forget about it? Will you not come? Will you forget about it? Forgiveness is very important in the kingdom of God. As we read from Jeremiah 31, the book said, I will forgive the witness and I will remember the sin no more. Hallelujah. Amen. God said we'll forgive our sin and you will never, never remember again. That's the message I want to share with you, brothers and sisters. That you should forgive one another and remember them no more and forget about them. Pretend like you never quarrel. When you do that, how many people want to do that? <coughs> Would you forgive one another? Yes. And please don't lie. Yes. God knows yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you forgive one another? Yes. Would you go back? I need this command. My son, you don't think like it. Yeah, that's the problem. Would you go back and tell your wife I'm sorry? Yes. It is not difficult. I'm sorry. Some of you, the wife are working. You can eat a bottle of home. You could not even get up and go and make your own food. <laughs> You want to wait for your wife to come and give it to you? Tell the general what's going on in the middle. Ah, the bunch of people. No. These are small things sometimes cause me to understand and a problem. The man believe. Tabukul and a wallet with a so and so. No. In Canada, you are not wallet with a so and so. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. In Canada, you are not wallet with a so and so. No. You are just here with your wife, trying to raise your children to be people of tomorrow. And the good and wallet and the land and the land, you now people. Hallelujah. Amen. Look, even if even you have a very nice car, who will say that you have a nice car? No, no, no. They will say it's a refugee from Sudan. But no one is knocking the door of Yongar Arabia, but I'm there. People will say, ah, it's you, the one in Tana. The man of your place. Lucky, Arabian Mafia. You are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to 
forgiveness is needed in South Sudanese community, in Vancouver, Canada, so that you can live together, so that you can live together as brothers and sisters, so that you can raise up your children to be people of tomorrow. Much I'm a mistake, our people are going to too. We have people who went to Katim and lived there for their whole life. They were not acted by land, small field of land. Because they're mine, tomorrow we will go back to South Sudan. Tomorrow we will go back to South Tomorrow we will go back to South Sudan. Tomorrow we will go back to South Sudan. Tomorrow we will go back to South Sudan. When? 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 And it came after we signed an agreement in the family. Woman mind the AI the figure. That was a big mistake. This is another mistake we are saying. You think that I'm going tomorrow. I'm going to Bakura. And I'm under Canada. Canada? Yeah, I'm going to And I'm actually going to tell you. You are not coming. You are not for the way. Where would you leave the teeth? They must see ways of living together and work together as a community so that you will be able to raise up your children. God bless you.